Surface Laptop Go 2. That's what this is about. It was sent to me as an appreciation gift. And I said, well, you know what? I'll do a review about it. And this was a 10-year Surface, you know, being part of the Surface family thing why it was sent to me. I received it on a Friday late afternoon after I was gone out to a high school football game. When I returned, here it was. I opened it up. There's actually an unboxing video you can look at. I'll put a link down in the description. And when I took it out, I was, wow, this is pretty nice. And I was, I guess, a little bit impressed because it's my first experience with any Surface laptop. We had a laptop or a laptop go. I do have experience with Surface Pro, RT, Surface 3, Surface Duos, a Surface Book, but never one of the laptop. I was a little impressed and set it aside and went and watched a few videos. Went and watched Juan Bagnell, his review. I like watching his stuff. Saw his review and he made a comment in there that I thought was just pretty fitting after I have evaluated this device a little bit, and that is that there's a thin line between cheap and inexpensive, where you get cheap stuff that's keyboards click and clack, device might separate around the body, just cheap or inexpensive, which means well-made, lesser cost. But then, of course, going along with those well-made devices, you're going to lose what some of them have features. You're not going to be able to go up as high in processor. You're not going to be able to go up as high in memory. You're going to lose things like in this case here with the laptop go to, you're not going to have inking capability. Very important feature for me. So no inking really is going to change what this device is ultimately going to get used for. So when I look at devices that really the laptop go is targeted to compete against, the thing that turns me off about them is are the polycarbonates that are used in the way that they feel. They feel cheap. They look cheap. And that's one of the things that you do not have with this device. It is not a cheap filling device. It's a very nice device. And again, inexpensive, not cheap. What was sent to me was an i5. 8 gig of RAM, 256 gig solid state drive. It's the same spec as the uh, Surface Pro that I use, with the exception that this is a later generation. The uh, Surface Pro that I have is a fifth generation, quite a bit older CPU, but same amount of memory, same processor, i5. So a good comparative of what performance you might be able to gain from that oak to this. Actually, quite a bit. In fact, I found using it, I enjoyed using it. It's a nice device to use. The keyboard being built in, it's a nice keyboard. It's not noisy, doesn't clickety-clack. My hands are, well, just take a look at this. You can never have too many Surface devices around. Let's open this baby up. And I wanted to open it up so that you can see the fingerprint power button is backlit. None of the other keys are backlit. Log in very quickly. While this is a small laptop, it is not too bad to lay your hands down. Okay, I'm not quite the touch type as I used to be, but did okay. Not very noisy either. Let me lean this uh, microphone down here so that you might hear. A lot of times with these lower end laptops, we get noisy keyboards. This one's not so bad. The glide pad. Works very well. Easy to move and select and right mouse click and left mouse click. Everything um, easy to use with it. And by easy, I mean, while it's small, I didn't have to fumble around to find keys. I wasn't crowded. In my use of Surface devices, I have the Surface Pro and Surface Duos, which I use a lot. My main go-to laptop is a Lenovo. 940 yoga 940 it's an i9 
with 16 gig of RAM and two terabyte of uh, solid state disk. So a decent workhorse. It's, uh, I could use more RAM, but the Surface Pro, I can ink on it. So marking up documents, etc. And that's where it wins out in this foot race with the uh, Laptop Go 2. The Laptop Go 2 misses inking. So you need to ink. This is not the device for you. One of the things you cannot do with this device is fold it out flat. It has to sit up in this kind of shape. It will not go back. So so this is as far back as it will fold open. Shouldn't be an issue for most people because you can't ink. So there's no need to lay it out flat. No drawing or any of that kind of stuff. Running Word, Excel, all your Office apps, PowerPoint, all of that stuff. It's a good device for that. Reading uh, PDFs and doing web browsing and maybe some OneNote if you're willing to type that stuff in. This device can make for a good student device or a businessman, especially a business traveler, because being so small... It's easier to carry around and say, maybe do work on your Excel sheets or your Word documents or touch up your PowerPoint presentation. It's, it's a good device for that. and Be easy to pull out on a plane and work with it. Students, because of the lower cost, it's a good entry device that is also of decent quality. I do recommend that you you know, if you're going to step into this arena, don't, go ahead and jump into the top end of it, which is the i5 8 gig unit, 256 gig SSD. So first, let's take a look at the pricing. There are three models available. There's a 4 gig. All of them are i5. There's a 4 gig, 128 gigabyte SSD. That is 569 at the pricing when I pulled this. There may be deals ran for the holidays. There is an 8 gig, 128 SSD, 599. And there is an 8 gig, 256 gig SSD. And that is the unit I have. On the technical specifications, unit is a about uh, 278 millimeters by 206 by 16, approximately. Screen is a 12.4 inch pixel sense display. Resolution is 1536 by 1024, 148 PPI. Aspect ratio of 3 to 2. It does have a 10 point multi touch screen. And as you saw, there are four and eight gig models. It does have a 11th gen i5 processor. Software that it ships with is Windows Home. It does have Office 365, as you probably expect. And the unit's rather light at 2.48 pounds. Battery life is supposed to be about 13.5 hours. Of course, there's a lot of factors involved in what the uh, battery life will actually be. As mentioned, there is one USB-C and one USB-A. The three, the USB-C is a 3.1 second gen. It also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and there is the Surface Connect port. You've got a 720 HD camera, so don't expect to get great quality, but it does work. It does have Wi Fi built in and, of course, Bluetooth 5.1. It is aluminum bodied. The base is aluminum and polycarbonate. So the top is aluminum and the base is aluminum and polycarbonate. It comes in multiple colors. The one I have is sandstone. There's a sage, ice blue, sandstone, and platinum. You have no SD card. You do have one Type-C 
3.1 second gen port. You could hook docking station up to that. That could give you your ability to do SSD, you know, one of these things right here, to do your SSD and other things. And that's pretty much it. I think it's a great device for some people. Just not going to be the device for me because I have a little bit higher need.